Hi there, I'm Sandy Alnock here for Ellen Hudson and I'm bringing you some exciting news. If you haven't heard yet, Ellen Hudson is now carrying Daniel Smith Extra Fine watercolors. To some of you that's not going to be much, but to me that means the world. The reason is because my mission in life lately has been to help paper crafters see that you are artists. You're making beautiful things all the time. And one of the best ways to make even more beautiful things and be more successful and have less stress while you're doing it is to have good tools at your disposal. And having good watercolors is something that is invaluable when you're trying to watercolor. Watercolor is now on its resurgence. Every 40 years or so, different mediums cycle back around to being popular and watercolor is just coming into its own again. So this is the perfect time if you've thought about joining in the watercolor bandwagon. I'm going to hopefully make it easy for you to get started. That's what this video is all about. It's not difficult. So we're going to start with this video in three parts. First, we're going to talk about production of paints. I wanted to show you how paints are made. I went on a tour of the Daniel Smith facility. I wasn't able to take pictures or shoot any video, but I took a friend with me. My friend Nolan Lee came along and he's an artist and he's going to show you the process through his pandas. So you're going to get to see pandas making paint in a few minutes. So stay tuned for that. Secondly, I'm going to talk about some products. And I'm not talking about investing your life savings in watercolor products. There are only four things you need and one of them is free. So I want to share with you some simple ways you can get started. And then third, I'll talk about the plan for education. So if you need to learn more about watercolor, I have so many things underway and I'm excited to bring them to you. So let's get started first with the tour, okay? Recently, I was lucky enough to join a few artist friends and tour the Daniel Smith facility to see how watercolors are made. As I said earlier, watercolor is surging in popularity. That means that artists are creating with beautiful watercolors all around the world and the demand is high. This little panda needs more paint. Daniel Smith to the rescue. Pigments most often come from two sources, natural or synthetic in origin. Natural pigments come from the earth, usually from the many minerals found throughout the world. The Daniel Smith mineralogist travels Indiana Jones style to mining sites and finds just the right minerals and rocks to use. Synthetic pigments are made by large laboratories specifically for use in supplying the car industry with high performance pigments. Minerals are then processed into pigment by cleaving them along their natural fracture lines. It's important that the minerals not be completely pulverized so they retain their ability to reflect light, making the watercolors more vibrant. And you all know how much we love vibrant, true colors that withstand the test of time. The next step is mixing the paint. Batch makers put the pigment, gum arabic, and distilled water into small or large mixers, depending on the quantities needed by artists around the world. Some are thick mixtures, some are thin, and some even need to be mixed for a whole week or more. After the paint is mixed, the air that entered during those days of mixing is pressed out of the paint by the process of dispersion, which uses a device commonly called a three-roll mill. Often the particle size is less than three microns compared to the thickness of a piece of paper, which is about a hundred microns. How's that for tiny? The on-site chemist has been checking the paint at every stage of this process to be sure that it meets the exacting standards matching the very first batch ever created at Daniel Smith. If that color and its properties are not right, he will know exactly how to adjust it or if it's time to scratch that batch and start over again. Each watercolor tube is filled from the bottom end so the top fills first, either by a machine if it's in large quantities or by hand for smaller runs of paint. Each one is sealed at the bottom 
the labels are added, and then the paints are ready to send to the stores. And now the artist once again has access to the paints needed to create masterpieces and the world becomes a more beautiful place. So this is the process of making Daniel Smith watercolors, assuring quality at each step in the process and maintaining the accuracy of colors and properties. Wasn't that a fun way to observe the process of making paint? Those pandas are adorable. If you would like a panda poster to put in your craft room, please see the link in the description down below. Nolan has them for sale on his website. Now I told you we're going to talk about products and I want to make it so it's simple for you. I don't want you to feel like you're going to have to buy a million things just to get started with watercolor. The first thing I would recommend is this little set. This is the essential set of six tubes of paint. They're five milliliter tubes. There's two yellows, two reds, and two blues. And while you might first think, oh my gosh, Sandy, I paint in purples and oranges. Why do I want reds and yellows and blues? Well, this little set of paints makes this many colors. Oh my gosh, crazy amounts of colors you can create out of these basics. There's a video that shows you how I made this chart from this little set of six colors and it's in the description down below. You can go check it out for yourself. I honestly made that many colors from this and you don't need to buy every color. Ellen carries all the colors that Daniel Smith has, but you don't need all the colors. Just start with six and make it easy on yourself. Next up is paper. There are so many papers out there and they, they range from super cheap ones you get at the dollar store all the way up to expensive $7,500 pads. And I wanna make this reasonable for you. So I'm gonna give you two different recommendations. One is to have a practice pad on hand. And this one is the Canson XL. It's a student grade paper. So the colors are not gonna look as true on this. They're gonna be a little paler than what you would normally get from that paint. They're also not going to have the same kinds of effects. You're gonna have a little more blooming and a little more of some other trouble areas on them. But if you just need to start putting paint on paper, this might be a good option to have one on hand. I keep a pad just to practice on, and then I move to my real paper when I'm ready to jump in on a real painting. I also recommend that you get, in addition to a practice paper, get some good paper. And the reason is because there are a lot of folks who stay with the practice paper for months or years, and then all of a sudden they decide to treat themselves to a pad of paper, and they're amazed at the difference in the quality of what they're watercoloring, and they wished they had listened to me sooner. So I'm gonna give you the heads up now. I would go ahead and get a pad of nicer paper. In terms of what to recommend, there's these three pads that I'm gonna show you that Ellen carries, and all of these are gonna be, they're gonna be way better than your student grades. This one is the satin grained hot press paper. Hot press is like paper that's been ironed and flattened. So it's watercolor paper and it's gonna take your watercolor, but it's very smooth. So if you like to do a lot of tiny detail work, or if you like to stamp with tiny detailed little tiny lines, this is going to accept that a lot better. Next up is cold press paper. These have a texture to them. Not a huge texture, but they have enough that it's gonna move the paint around on the paper. You're gonna have highs and lows in that surface. So you're gonna be able to do some dry brush work. You're gonna be able to see how some of the paints granulate because they're gonna be able to use that surface a little bit better. And this one is probably cold, regular cold press in a number of different brands is probably the most common among watercolorists. And then if you're crazy like me, you might want to try some of the rough cold press. Rough cold press has even more texture and I love the texture. So this is what I use the most. So I'll just throw that out there for you. So that's paints and paper. And now we need to figure out a brush. There are a lot of brushes out there and a lot of different features that different brushes have. The ones that I like the most as a paper crafter and watercolorist are the black velvet brushes from the black velvet line from the silver brush company these brushes get a really fine point on them when they're wet when they're dry they look a little on the fuzzy side but they hold a lot of color and they point really well so in the rounds i would get if you're only going to get one i would get a number four probably 
as a paper crafter. Number two is for like super tiny detailed areas. And then a six and an eight will be more for wider washes. So a number four, if that's all you're gonna get, is probably gonna be your best bet. There are also flat brushes and oval wash brushes and all sorts of things, but let's keep it simple and just get round brushes for right now. So there we have our paints, we have our paper, we have our brush, and I told you there was a fourth thing, right? And that it was free and that's practice. Because if you don't practice, then nothing else is gonna work for you. You have to practice. Think about going to the gym. You don't start off on the machine with the biggest weights or you don't start off with the longest distance at the beginning. You work your way up to it. So you're going to need to put in a lot of practice. All of that brings me to my plan because I wanna give you a lot to practice on. And I have a plan on my own blog as well as over here on Ellen's blog. And I wanna share with you some of the stuff that's coming up. This week on my blog, I'm sharing a paint along series in which you can download a sketch. I'll show you how to transfer it onto your watercolor paper and then paint along with me in real time. You can watch me mix the paints right there on screen and learn how to work with your own paints and learn some techniques by following along. I'm also going to be doing a series here on the Ellen Hudson site, and I'm gonna share with you all the terminology a person could possibly ever want. I'm gonna share techniques and all kinds of information about watercolors and how they're made and why they work the way they do so we can understand the medium better and be able to use it more effectively. So I hope you're going to enjoy this journey with me and that you'll follow along. If you hit the subscribe button down below, either on my channel or Ellen's or both, and there's a little round button right next to it. If you click that button, it gives you the option to have the videos emailed to you. And that means when one goes live, you're gonna be the first to go see it and you're not gonna miss a thing. You can also subscribe to either blog so you can get information from me in both locations and not miss out. I'm also in Periscope and I will be Periscoping watercolor from time to time as well. And you can find me over there as Sandy Alnock. All right, I think that's about enough for today. I hope you're gonna have fun with me on this journey and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.